In 2000, the United States organized a nuclear power event and invited eight major nuclear power powers including France, the United Kingdom, Japan, and South Korea. This conference profoundly affected the future pattern of global nuclear power. They reached a consensus and gradually discussed six major technical directions for future nuclear energy development, which is called, fourth-generation nuclear energy technology. But what they never expected is that these future nuclear power technologies will be led by another country, which is a big country from the east, China. In September 2021, Huawei, Gansu, China announced that the thorium-based molten salt nuclear reactor was officially put into trial operation. This is the world's first fourth-generation molten salt reactor nuclear power technology in commercial operation, which shocked the nuclear energy industry. What is a thorium-based molten salt reactor? Okay, let me put it this way. It is considered by scientists to be the ultimate energy solution before humans achieve nuclear fusion. In fact, thorium nuclear reactor technology originated in the United States. As early as the 1950s, the United States began research, and countries all over the world are also very concerned about this technology. However, due to various technical problems, countries around the world have interrupted the research of this technology. But India is an exception. They have been studying thorium reactors for many years. They have established 66 thorium fuel reactors in the country and have always claimed to be the leader in thorium nuclear reactors. But it is a pity that although India has built many reactors, it has also failed to overcome the fourth generation thorium nuclear power plant technology. So, for a long time, thorium based nuclear power plants have been unknown. Therefore, when China announced that it had overcome these technical difficulties, it instantly aroused heated discussions in the global nuclear energy community. Charles, a nuclear expert at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, said, China's reactors will provide the world with a test platform for extensive research. Banwell, a British PhD in materials science, was even more excited. He said, if China allows me to participate in the test, I will fly there immediately. The responses of these top global experts also proved that China is a world leader in thorium nuclear reactor technology. So here comes the question, why was the thorium-based reactor technology first realized by China? Can thorium nuclear reactors really bear the title of future energy? Today, we want to talk to you guys about thorium-based reactor technology. Okay, let's get started. Thorium-based reactor technology did originate in the United States. During World War II, the United States launched the Manhattan Project to study nuclear weapons, in which the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee was responsible for the classification and extraction of enriched uranium. But few people know that Oak Ridge Laboratory is also responsible for another secret project, nuclear-powered aircraft research. At that time, the U.S. Air Force was trying to build a bomber with an ultra-long battery life that could carry nuclear weapons for long-range nuclear threats. The only thing that could meet the needs of this aircraft was a nuclear-powered aircraft. So, the U.S. Air Force developed a project called, AIE, Aircraft Reactor Experiment. The Oak Ridge Laboratory is the institution responsible for this research. The technical route they adopt is the molten salt reactor, and the Chinese thorium-based molten salt reactor is one of them. Unfortunately, soon the AIE project hit a major turning point. In 1957, the Soviet Union successfully tested an intercontinental missile, which has a longer range and faster speed, and can carry nuclear weapons for long-range threats. This makes the United States nuclear-powered aircraft research extremely embarrassing. The Air Force therefore decided to suspend the research. Without the support of the U.S. military, the molten salt nuclear reactor at Oak Ridge Laboratory could only be converted to civilian use. In fact, civilian use is the main battlefield for molten salt piles. A variety of materials can be used for molten salt reactors, 
among which the use of thorium as nuclear fuel is the most valuable. It is rich in reserves, and the proven thorium element is enough for human use for thousands of years. In addition, there are substantial undiscovered resources, moreover, thorium has better performance. For the same one ton of material, thorium fuel can provide energy equivalent to 200 tons of uranium after closed-loop use. Therefore, thorium raw materials are considered to be one of the future fuels. Therefore, from an economic point of view, the prospect of thorium-based molten salt reactors is better than that of traditional uranium nuclear reactors. That's why team members at Oak Ridge Laboratory chose a thorium-based molten salt reactor after testing a variety of materials. In 1965, the world's first civil molten salt reactor was successfully born, and Oak Ridge Laboratory chose thorium fuel as the nuclear fuel for the molten salt reactor. Of course, the technology of the thorium-based molten salt reactor at this time is still immature, and its power is only 2.5 megawatts. Besides, its startup costs are also high, and issues such as corrosion resistance remain unresolved. But the combination of thorium fuel and molten salt reactors proved the feasibility of salt reactors, and countries around the world began to take notice of the technology. The Soviet Union, Europe, Japan, South Korea and other countries are all deploying this technology, and China is no exception. In 1970, China began to develop thorium-based molten salt reactors. The following year, Oak Ridge Laboratory made another breakthrough, and they completed the design of a 1 gigawatt thorium-based molten salt breeder reactor. If it can be built according to the design, the United States may take the lead in completing the civilian development of thorium nuclear reactors. However, the design of the Oak Ridge Laboratory has not yet been formally verified, and the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission suddenly cut investment and shifted its focus to nuclear reactors that use uranium as a raw material. It is not without reason that the original committee of the United States did this. At that time, it was at the peak of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. Both the United States and the Soviet Union were on guard against nuclear weapons. The United States' demand for nuclear weapons was far greater than that of civilian nuclear facilities. As a result, the thorium-based molten salt reactor with stronger performance, higher safety, and higher economic effect was abandoned by the United States. In 1976, the molten salt reactor project was officially discontinued. The Soviet Union also stopped the research and development of molten salt reactors. They also had this research at that time, but due to the Chernobyl nuclear accident, the development of nuclear power plants in the Soviet Union was almost at a standstill. Without the United States and the Soviet Union taking the lead, other countries would naturally not be enthusiastic about this technology, and they also suspended this research for 40 years. In the past 40 years, human beings have proved that the original choice was not correct. The nuclear power plant using uranium as raw material has been updated three times, but its safety has always been a major problem. Even the United States itself has experienced many nuclear accidents, among which the Three Mile Island nuclear accident was the most serious. At that time, 62 tons of the nuclear power plant's core melted down and radioactive materials spilled out. Afterwards, the United States spent 1 billion US dollars and took 14 years to successfully clean up the nuclear waste. Before and after this accident, other nuclear power plants in the United States also had multiple nuclear leaks, and they spent as much as 2 billion US dollars a year on the safety and maintenance of nuclear power plants. By 1999, the United States realized that the limitations of conventional nuclear power plants using uranium as raw materials were too great, so they finally made up their minds to change this status quo. In 1999, the Office of Nuclear Energy of the U.S. Department of Energy proposed for the first time the initiative to build a fourth-generation nuclear power plant, calling on all countries to pay attention to nuclear energy safety issues. Then there was the beginning of the video. The United States, Japan, France, Britain, 
Canada and other nine countries held a forum of senior government representatives to discuss the development of fourth-generation nuclear power technology. In 2001, nine countries formally signed the GID Charter and established a dedicated organization. More than 100 experts from around the world, represented by the United States, evaluated 130 nuclear reactors, hoping to select nuclear reactors in terms of stability, economy, safety, reliability, proliferation suppression, and physical protection. Especially safety is the top priority. Dramatically, they found that the molten salt reactor, which was once abandoned by the United States, just met all the requirements, and the thorium-based molten salt nuclear reactor in the molten salt reactor happened to be the easiest path to achieve. Only then did the scientists discover that the technology they had abandoned was the ideal direction they had been pursuing for many years. Fortunately, everyone has gradually reached a consensus this time, and there are no constraints other than technology. In 2002, the molten salt reactor and five other nuclear reactors were jointly recognized as the fourth generation six major nuclear power technologies. According to the general prediction of nuclear energy scientists, these types of reactors will be born in the next 20 years, and can complete commercial operation in 2030, and then gradually replace the previous three generations of technology. Therefore, countries capable of building nuclear power plants all want to seize the opportunity. They rearranged the thorium-based molten salt reactor and various technologies according to their own conditions, but it is also very difficult to restart this technology. Faced with this difficulty, some countries simply gave up this technology, but there are also two very special countries, one is China and the other is India. Let's talk about India first. It is one of the few countries that has chosen the right direction. In 1954, Homi Jabba, a well-known Indian nuclear physicist, proposed that India has more thorium resources than uranium and thorium is easier to extract, so India should develop reactors that use thorium as nuclear fuel. This plan was supported by the then Indian Prime Minister Nehru, so Homi Jinja Baba designed a progressive development path for India, and thorium is the ultimate nuclear fuel for India in the future. Therefore, while other countries have suspended thorium nuclear reactors, India has started the construction of nuclear reactors based on thorium fuel. So when the molten salt reactor was selected as the next generation nuclear power technology, India was very happy. Their domestic nuclear energy professionals valued the status of the leader of the thorium-based molten salt reactor very much. In 2007, the head of India's Purple Atomic Research Center publicly announced, by 2020, India will be the only country in the world that uses thorium to produce nuclear energy on a large scale. In 2015, China captured the world's attention when it announced it would build the world's first 10 MW thorium-based molten salt reactor, which angered Indian nuclear experts. Indian nuclear energy expert Srinivasan publicly stated that India is the world's number one in research on the fourth-generation thorium-based nuclear reactor, and no one is ahead of us. Srinivasan is not only an authority in India's nuclear energy industry, but also the former chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. He is an official figure. His direct oath is a sign of India's confidence in thorium-based nuclear reactors. Later, India announced that it will realize the world's first commercial thorium reactor in 2025, which is much earlier than China. However, these declarations of India were broken by China in 2021. The Chinese team was born and completed the technical verification of the thorium-based molten salt reactor and the construction of the test reactor before India. So how did China do it? Why can it catch up with the United States and India? This also starts with China's nuclear energy. In the 1970s, there was an energy crisis in the world, and China could not avoid it. Its electricity was often restricted due to energy problems, and domestic industrial development was under great pressure. So on February 8, 1970, China launched a research project on nuclear power plants, 
which was also named Project 728. In the early days of the 728 project, the molten salt reactor was used as a technological breakthrough route. The following year, the 728 project built a zero-power cold-state molten salt reactor and reached a critical state. Unfortunately, China's nuclear industry had not yet started at that time, and many technical problems could not be solved, so the research had to be stopped. The 728 project was converted to the construction of a light water reactor with less technical difficulty, and it also became the famous Qinshan nuclear power plant later. But for molten salt reactors, China has not completely given up. Since China is also rich in thorium resources, and the site selection of molten salt reactors that do not use water is particularly flexible, a large number of them can be built in inland China. Therefore, China has no reason not to list the thorium-based molten salt reactor as a key research and development object. In 2011, the Chinese Academy of Sciences announced the launch of a five-year strategic pilot project, Future Advanced Nuclear Fission Energy Thorium-Based Molten Salt Reactor Nuclear Energy System, codenamed MSR. The investment in this plan is as high as 350 million US dollars. So how does China make it? Well, the project had two directions at that time, one was the solid fuel molten salt reactor FHR, and the other was a liquid fuel molten salt reactor TMSR. Solid fuel molten salt reactors are a bit like traditional nuclear power plants, with relatively low safety and technical difficulty, while liquid molten salt reactors are the real fourth-generation nuclear power technology, with higher difficulty and safety so liquid molten salt reactors are the future 10-year pilot project. However, in terms of technology, the relationship between the two is progressive. To master liquid reactor technology, you must first master solid-state reactor technology. Therefore, China has formulated two plans for simultaneous development strategically. When building a 10 MW solid molten salt reactor, a 2 MW liquid molten salt reactor will be built simultaneously. When the solid molten salt reactor expands to 100 WM, the liquid molten salt reactor will be synchronized to 10 MW. Finally, China will try to overcome the technical problems of the 100 MW liquid molten salt reactor and strive to be the first to realize commercial use within 20 years. This has a great advantage. It can promote the overall strategy while accumulating technology and talents, and will not delay the overall strategy due to the cultivation of talents. In order to cultivate talents, the Chinese team has also carried out in-depth cooperation with the United States. At that time, the United States was researching molten salt reactor technology, and was very optimistic about solid molten salt reactors, so the two countries quickly reached a cooperation. Through this method, China has accumulated 350 full-time research talents within three years, and the team members have expanded within five years. It has grown to more than 500 people, and today the team has thousands of people. In 2016, the Chinese team successfully completed systematic technical verification and became the leader in the development of international thorium-based molten salt reactors. In 2018, China has accumulated more than 150 patented technologies, and China is leading the research and development of the fourth-generation nuclear reactor in the world. In May 2021, the main project of TMSR has been completed, and the trial operation was officially launched in September of that year. China has declared in a near-perfect way that the future of nuclear energy will be guided by China, leaving behind the United States and India the two major molten salt reactor powerhouses. Of course, according to the plan, the current molten salt reactor project is still in the experimental stage, and there is still a distance from the final goal. Only when all of them pass the verification and start to promote can it be called a real victory. I believe that with China's rigorous technology, the commercial promotion of China's thorium-based molten salt reactor will not be too far away. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.